Your mother don't know how you feel. Your brother don't know how you feel. Your best friend don't know how you feel. Only you and God know how you feel. But I can tell you one thing, guys. I know what you're going through. Because I've been locked up in 10 different states. I've ridden 2,500 miles in cuffs and leg irons and waist chains. And so I know what it's like to be in chains. I know what it's like to wear those uniforms. I know what it's like to sleep in those beds, to eat the jail food, the prison food, be behind the walls, the gun towers, the fences. I know what it's like, okay? And I also know what it's like to be always on the run, always looking over your shoulder. You know, for almost 40 years of my life, I was on the wrong side of the law. And when I was in a restaurant eating and a cop walked in, I might go in the bathroom and go out the window. The cop was probably just hungry. He wasn't even after me. But the Bible says a wicked man runs when no one's chasing him. But by 1982, I was implicated as being one of the leading cocaine dealers in Kansas City, Missouri. And I had all the money I wanted. If I wanted to do something that cost 10 grand, I went and did it because tomorrow I had another 10 grand. If I wanted to stay in a motel that cost $500 in a hotel room, I could do it because tomorrow I had more money. If I wanted to ride in a limousine, I did it because I had money. So I finally had the money I'd always wanted. I found out I could, I could make a phone call and have someone killed. So I finally had the power I'd always wanted. And I didn't realize how much influence I had until September 5th, 1982 when I was arrested. And ha what happens when you get arrested on a weekend, guys? Right? I've been arrested on weekends, I know what happens. Well, I didn't realize that was a Sunday afternoon, September 5th, 1982. Two o'clock in the afternoon, I walked into that jail and was able to make my phone call, and I made a phone call to a city councilman that I was selling cocaine to in Kansas City. And I told that city councilman, you knew who to call, because we were selling cocaine to a judge. And I don't know if you guys understand this, but if you're selling cocaine to a judge, he don't want you in jail. And I was out of jail at 1.30 Monday morning, less than 12 hours after being arrested. I beat a man with a baseball bat, put a hundred stitches in the back of his head, and I was arrested for attempted murder and was later reduced to first degree assault and intent to kill. In Missouri, that carries 15 years to life. I've been out of prison, Ben, for 18 years. I got out of prison in 1964, and I'd committed crimes, done burglary, sold drugs, promoted prostitution, pornography, did all kinds of illegal activities for 18 years and had not got caught. Unlike some of the testimonies you're going to hear this weekend of guys that did lots and lots of time, I went 18 years without doing any time. And I didn't think I could get caught. But on September 5th, 1982, when I was arrested, I was facing going back to prison for the rest of my life. On April 15th, 1983, 11 days from now, I will celebrate my 25th year of walking with God. See, guys try to argue with me about religion. They try to tell me. I, I, you, I said, wait, before you start, let me explain something to you. A man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an argument. That's right. And you see, I know what kind of man I was 25 years ago, and I know what kind of man I am today. See, I carried a flamethrower on my back, and I burned every bridge I walked across. I become your best friend today and we go do a job together and tomorrow I'm going to try to sleep with your wife and rob you. Because I was no good, man. I would stab myself in the back. I didn't trust myself. And guys, I know what kind of man I was 25 years ago and I know what I am today. And see, I had an experience. God gave me back my mind. God gave me back that woman that I told you about. I have her today. He gave me back my wife. See, I feel like the richest man in the world today, not because I have money, but because the things that God gave me, I couldn't buy with no amount of money. I got my wife back. I got my mind back. I got my children back. I have a relationship with those four kids today. He kept me from going to prison, man. I was facing 15 to life, and I didn't do any time over that case. He gave me peace. He delivered me from cocaine. He delivered me from alcohol. The things that I was doing, I couldn't pay to get those things done. And see, I feel rich because of that today, guys. I was walking into a prison a few years ago to speak to 500 inmates on a prison yard. And I had a Bible under my arm, and this inmate comes up and says, You're a Christian, aren't you? And I said, Yeah. And he said, I'd like to be a Christian, but I'm afraid it'll be too boring. And I said, You're right, it is boring. And he goes, It is? And I said, Oh, man, being a Christian is real boring. If you're talking about taking your Bible 
and laying it down here and picking it up Sunday morning and taking it to church and after church you lay it back down there and leave it till the next Sunday, it's boring. Amen. But when you live for God 24-7, it's not boring. Let me tell you about Bill Quorum. I'm not a man that can live a boring life. I'm 64 years old, guys. This is what I do, okay? And I can't live a boring life. Before I became a Christian, my partner had a turbo career Porsche that would go 185 miles an hour. We used to get in his car and go through downtown Kansas City 150. I said, if you think going three times the speed level with an Uzi in the back seat is boring, you should go with me. I used to get on a motorcycle and ride 15 miles in 10 minutes through downtown Kansas City at 4 o'clock in the morning, 140 across the Crosstown Freeway. With cocaine in my boots, two pistols on me, I said, if you think that's boring, come go with me. A shooting gallery. You guys know what a shooting gallery is? Not a target range. A place where people slammed up. I would walk into a shooting gallery, take my 9mm lead here and my 357 here, and open up my box with six ounces of cocaine in it and maybe $20,000 in cash. And I was praying that somebody would try to take my cocaine or my money so I could shoot them. I said, if you think that's boring, come go with me to the shooting gallery. Now let me tell you, as a Christian, what I do. I go to San Quentin Prison with Bill Glass where there's 6,000 inmates and they let a thousand at a time on the big yard. And I walk around the big yard and I tell those men in, in that prison about how God changed my life. I, said, I asked one of the officers, I said, man, I gotta have something to do at night. What's going on in this town? Where's the drugs being sold and the prostitution? And he goes, Bill, there's one area of town you don't want to go to. Anybody know what area that would have been? Gabrini Green? The worst projects in the United States? They said, don't go there during the day, Bill. Don't ever go there at night. Well, we didn't. We waited until midnight. We went there at midnight, and I walked down an alley, and I'm telling a crack addict about how Jesus changed my life. And I'm standing on a corner telling a prostitute how God changed my life, and her pimp rolls up in his Cadillac and goes, Hey, boy, what are you doing? I said, Get out of that Cadillac, and I'll tell you. And I told him how God changed my life. Live a boring life, guys. If being a Christian was boring, I'd be going back to doing what I was doing because I gotta have action in my life. See, I never stopped at red lights and waited until they turned green before I became a Christian. Because I didn't have time to wait. If there was no cops around, no cars coming, I'm gone. And after I become a Christian, I, I had to stop doing that because it wasn't right. But you know what? Today, my wife says, Bill was going 200 miles an hour in the world, and God didn't reach down and turn the car around. I mean, he didn't reach down and say, whoa, stop. He reached down and turned the car around. He's still going 200, but he's going in the other direction. Amen. See, guys, this is what I do because I care about you. I, I, I want to tell you guys, God's got a plan for your life. My teammates that are here have got some information that can change your life. It can change your life if you let them. Get with my teammates. Take this information, apply it to your life, and your life will never be the same. God bless you guys.